Uh, joining us now to talk more about what is transpiring, the Director of Research and Investigations at Judicial Watch, Chris Farrell. Chris, it's so good to have you here. Uh, let's start at the beginning. What information specifically were you looking for in these FOIA requests? Well, you know, there's a requirement on the part of the president and the administration anytime it comes to release of prisoners from, Gu from Guantanamo, and certainly any sort of a swap, any sort of a negotiation uh, being made for them, for the administration to notify Congress. And they, once again, they've done an end run. They've ignored Congress and they swapped out five of the most violent, heinous uh, detainees from Guantanamo for uh, the person who appears to be a deserter, Sergeant uh, Bergdahl. And so we asked questions about that, about payments of money, about, uh, you, you know, they, they don't want to admit that they paid a, a bribe in order to try to get these, or a ransom in order to get Bergdahl released. But there may have been certain uh, incentives that were conveyed to various parties. So we wanted to get to the bottom of it. You know, by what authority did the president negotiate or, or swap out five terrorists? And what sort of payments may have been made or incentives uh, conveyed to other parties? And per usual, the administration stonewalled and failed to respond as the law required. And so we go to court and we compel them to answer. Right, now this, just to kind of backtrack, so you did this in June and then again in November? Yeah, so uh, it was a series of requests. Uh, you know, I, folks uh, should appreciate that we have over 2,800 active FOIA requests in our database that we're actively managing. So we file, you know, series of requests uh, with a number of agencies over a period of months, because as the story develops, as it unfolds, we get more information and then we help fine tune our requests to go specifically after information. And so over, over a period of time, we had asked these questions, they had been ignored, and our only remedy is to go to court and sue. So you just didn't receive a single response? Correct. So now you're filing a lawsuit, right? Right. Take us through that process. What's involved now? Sure. So initially what happens is there's an exchange of briefs. The lawyers on both sides uh, essentially file papers of the court explaining what our complaint is, and then the government answers and explains how either they don't want to or they don't think that our complaint is sufficient or there's a back and forth, a volley and serve back and forth. Uh, what, what eventually happens is that the agency is forced to appear in front of a federal judge and explain why it is they don't want to comply with the law. That's kind of a losing proposition for the agency. The judge normally becomes somewhat frustrated and orders the agency to produce the records we're seeking, because frankly, it isn't that hard. It isn't that complicated. And they usually set up a schedule, a calendar of production. And so the agency is then compelled to produce records to us over a period of time. And that sort of is the kickoff to the, the whole process itself. Chris, last month in a letter to Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel, California Congressman Duncan Hunter suggested the U.S. tried to pay a ransom to get Bergdahl back. Then later, Admiral Kirby, the Pentagon spokesman, denied the attempt. Do these competing stories in and of themselves suggest wrongdoing? They do. Um, you know, they, they, won't, they, they may not want to use the word ransom. They would use other terms to describe the payment of monies, uh, they would, I'm sure there's a there's a there's an entire thesaurus full of terms that can be used to describe, you know, incentive payments or some sort of maintenance payment for a confidential employment or a contact. But the bottom line is money changed hands, and that's what we're trying to get the details on. Chris, you have filed, as you mentioned earlier, several FOIAs. How how unusual is it for you to receive no response whatsoever. I don't unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not that uncommon. Um, the Obama administration has a deplorable record on FOIA and, and transparency generally. And, and very often, uh, agencies take an extraordinarily arrogant uh, position and they, they fail to respond at all to our requests. Uh, or, they, or they send an, an acknowledgement saying, yes, thank you, we have your request but there's no substantive response to our request. We've got about a minute and a half left. And obviously, uh, 
you get frustrated over this, uh, this lack of transparency. But let's say you get the information that you're looking for. Right. But the minute that remains, what are the implications and what actions would follow? Well, you know, the American public is still uh, sort of left out uh, in the wind when it comes to Bergdahl. There's been no uh, adequate explanation for exactly what he did or did not do, the circumstances surrounding his departure. His platoon mates say he's a deserter. Uh, the Army hasn't drawn any conclusions, or if they have, they haven't released them. He's on some sort of limited duty, as a, I think, as a, I believe, as a, as a protocol NCO. Um, but there's no hard and fast answer. There's no justification for why and how we would swap out five of the most dangerous terrorists from Guantanamo uh, for a guy who's a deserter. It, it, and, you know, it, it sends a broader message in the context of the normalization of relations with Cuba, with uh, kowtowing to the, to the North Koreans on this movie uh, about, you know, the Sony picture in Hollywood. Uh, you know, the Obama administration has an established track record now of weakness and compliance to terrorists uh, and to others around the world who don't have our best interests in mind. It's a very sad state of affairs for and unfortunately, we will have to leave it there. Chris Farrell of Judicial Watch, sir, despite the depressing news, Merry Christmas to you. And America's Forum continues after this update.